Hey, what's going down, y'all? Listen, you guys, before you watch this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you're clicking on the notification bell so you know each and every time a new episode is released or a new video is uploaded. I'm Fitch. See you guys on the other side. Get your ass off the fence and subscribe right now. Hey, welcome to Off the Fence. I'm Finch, and my guest tonight is a powerful speaker, teacher, motivator, and supporter of emerging leaders and aspiring influencers with over two decades of leadership experience, public speaking, and most importantly, real life business experiences. She shows up and inspires women to get out of their heads, and she's here tonight to help you live bold and to live a life that you won't forget. And she's in our one shot right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tina Moha. What's going on, Fetch? Hey, Tina. Okay, I see you. You came. You came to slay something tonight, huh? I showed up. You are not playing around tonight, is you? I showed up. How are you? I am fantastic. How are hey, you doing? I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for being here, your confidence coach. You give people a lot of confidence across the country, huh? I do my best. So, 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 why do you think so many people lack confidence that they need someone to pour that confidence in them or bring that boldness out of them? It's a plethora of things, right? Um, things we go through in our past, things that look like setbacks or um, relationship um, upbringing. It could be a lot of things. That's the cool thing. It doesn't matter where you are. Uh, doesn't matter where you got stumped you're probably going to come to me to get out of it and get back on track. So that's why I'm here. Okay. And so you have a book called Unleash and Soar. Yes. And that book helps people live boldly and beyond limits. So I want to talk about the limits because I think oftentimes we are, we have self-imposed sanctions like with the NCAA. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We just out here sanctioning ourselves. And I think for the most part, people don't realize why they have these self-imposed sanctions where they limit what they can do, where they can go, or even in some cases who they can meet. Why do you think that is? It's called our comfort zone and it's built to keep us comfortable. It's built to protect us from anything happening to us. So a lot of times we don't look at our comfort zone as being the limits that keep us from the very things that we want to achieve in life. Um, we, we block it off and we say, you know what, life is good here. Not, yeah. pretty, not really sure about what's going to happen outside of the bubble, so to speak. Um, so we stay within those limits. But at the same time, we are we're frustrated. Because our dreams, the things that we're really built to do, the reason why the greatness is inside of us exist mm. for us to get outside of those limits. So it's a tug of war. Some of us pull hard enough to get outside of those limits and live amazing lives. Unfortunately, there's some of us that stay trapped inside of the limits, inside of our minds, mm. inside of um, the things that keep us bound. And we are just stay frustrated. Okay. So, so, so how did you get beyond your limits? How oh. did you get beyond those barriers that were, that you probably created initially in your life? Yeah. Um, I think my journey is just like other people's journeys, which makes me so relatable. I'm continuing to get past those limits. Um, a major one was a relationship that I was in that was abusive and I had to get out. Um, for my sanity, for the sanity of my kids, but it was something that was very tumultuous, right? Um, mm -hmm. I had to, I had to dig deep. I had to know that starting over wasn't the 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 most awful thing that could happen. Mm -hmm. It ended up setting me on a really cool path, um, and that path allows me to reach back and help women who are frustrated and in that same situation. Um, so, to answer your question, Finch, the way that I get out of my limits is to know, here's the thing about me. There's always been something inside of me that I've known I'm different, mm. 
Mm-hmm. Lot, lot different, right? The hair, the just the personality, just different than everyone else. Mm-hmm. And I've always relied on that, knowing that it, it has a purpose and it's going to take me somewhere. So being stuck, being um, being confined within those limits never really worked for me. And I think we all have that nagging feeling of, ah, this isn't it. Mm-hmm. Ah, there's more to this. There's more to this thing called life than where I am right now. And if we allow that to continue to pull us um, and we listen, then we'll usually have the thing that's inside of us to get us out of where we are. OK. All right. All right. So so we talk about boldly living boldly. Yeah. What would you define living boldly as? What is that? Taking risks, not being afraid to jump not watching life pass you by and not really caring what people say, what people Mm. think, what their opinions are, how they're going to feel about it, living life on your own terms. That's a tough one for a lot of people. Yeah. But here's the thing though, Tina, I tell people all the time, it's not tough. You just won't make the decision. That's really what it is. It's not hard at all. Yeah. It's not hard. When, When we say things are hard, the struggle is us deciding. That's the hard thing for us. It's not the decision itself. It's us deciding to make it or not to make it. So we stay on the fence of whether or not we're going to do it. Whether Because that's the same thing with people's opinion about us. Why do we care so much? Why? I ask this to people all the time. Why do you care what so-and-so thinks? Why do you care what so-and-so said? Why does it matter to you? Because if you don't find why it matters to you, it's going to forever plague you. Exactly. When I'm coaching my clients, two words I say a lot is so what? Well, Tina, well what are they what are they gonna think if so what? Well, how are they gonna feel if I well, so what? So what if I don't show up and so what and who cares? Who cares? So what and who cares? We really have to cut those strings that tie us to what other people think and how they're gonna feel about the decisions that we have to ultimately ultimately make for our lives. How did you come to that point? You know, like at what point we're talking about three years ago, five years ago, 15 years ago. At what how many years back was it that you said, I don't I now can no longer care about what people think about me, what people say about me, because it doesn't matter. Why? Um, it was probably about 20 years ago. Um, 20 years ago. It's okay. probably was about 20 years ago. I hated corporate America. Um, Love the money that came with it, but hated it. So I went left. I I quit. I started my own business um, and I went against the grain. I go against the grain a lot. So it's kind of habitual. Right. I have this history of going against the grain, Um, but just doing things that people are go. Are you sure about that? And seeing it work out, no Mm. matter if it's if it's a, a tough road, if it comes easily, sticking with it to see it work out. Yeah. So about 20 years ago, um, left corporate America, started a fitness company and Mm -hmm. um, started companies after that. Being a fitness instructor really brought me to being a confidence coach because women would rally and ask after class, well, I need help with this. And what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. And I went home and said, am I a coach or something like, why are they asking me? Why are they coming to me? Um, But yeah, going against the grain and just saying, okay. Forget it. I'm not going that way. I think my destiny is this way and having the courage enough to do that. And that's good. Now, now going against the grain, you know, I'm going to go against the greener myself. Yeah. How that worked out for you? Good. (laughs) (laughs) It worked out great, huh? (laughs) I think so. Yeah, I think so. I'm doing what I love. I get to meet amazing people like you. Um, no, no tea, no shade, not stuck to a corporate desk anymore. Just mm. wasn't my thing. Um, and I'm a creative. So I'm in the space where I can create and I can build communities and I can mm. help women and I can tell my story. Yeah. So it worked out very well. You think I'm amazing? Uh, sometimes you can be. <laughs> well, let's talk about those times. <laughs> How do you break down which time is amazing, which time is not, nah, you know? For you? For me. Yeah, for me. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're you're you. You're very comfortable in your skin and you can tell. Um, I stalked you on Clubhouse. 
Whoa. We had this. No, we <laughs> had this conversation. So you, you're you a really dope uh, moderator, right? So mm-hmm. I was in, when I met you on Clubhouse, I was in the mode where I was watching. Where I was watching, paying attention and learning from those um, who are great, who are pretty amazing. And I was like, oh, okay, I like his style. Yeah, I see how he's jumping in conversations. He knows nothing about what they're talking about, but he <laughs> is... <laughs> You got that. He is <laughs> funny, right? Yeah. He's lively. His personality makes up for, I don't know why he's in this room about yarn and <laughs> vegan listen, lifestyle. Listen, here's a story of, about those types of rooms because I often get that from people, right? Yeah. People will ping me or say, hey, can you come in this room? And I'll come in most times just to support people because I just love being somebody's cheerleader. Yeah. And then they'll say, hey, invite me up to speak. And I'll say no 15 times and they'll keep asking. And I'll be like, okay, maybe they have something else they want me to do. And when I get up there, it's like, yeah, so let's talk about yarn, Finch. <laughs> Don't know anything about yarn. I think you know that. Why you got me in here? <laughs> So then I just use it as an opportunity to build a relationship with people that's in the room uh, or to showcase who I am and what I can do. You know, that way that happened to me a couple of weeks ago. Wow. I ended up in a conversation with billionaires. I didn't want to be in that room. And the billionaire actually asked me to come on my show. So we got him coming on the show. We got the next. That's so cool. sometimes that it works out for you because you show up with the confidence in who you are what you can do. And like Peter said, what problem you can solve. Exactly. Exactly. It's just being you, just being you and the skin you're in and not trying to conform to what everyone else around you is doing. Why do you think we don't see ourselves as valuable enough? Like we oftentimes compare ourselves to other people, especially in the clubhouse. We're always comparing ourselves to the celebrities or the notable people on the stages and speaking with the little green dot. They don't realize the green dot goes away when they leave the room. So Why do you think a a host of people don't value their authentic selves? I think, unfortunately, some of us spend more time getting to know other people than we do getting to know ourselves. Mm. Really connecting with really how dope we are. Like people will say, does she really say she's the dopest confidence? Well, why shouldn't I? Right. Why shouldn't I? Why would I introduce myself as "Ah, I'm okay?" Really? That part. Right. Really? Um, so, yeah, we, we spend time big upping uh, other people. We spend time cheering on other people. We spend time um, in relationship with other people, but really not connecting with who we are, knowing our likes, knowing um, who what we love, knowing what we're brilliant at and being able to communicate that women are women suck at that men have this down just men kill it in this department women, not all of us well, not so, all of us. you fake it really well women <laughs> suck because we'll just play the background and yeah well yeah you know that's kind of what i do sometimes you know well i don't know you, you, it just comes natural i don't know yeah. and men are like yeah i'm great yeah yeah this that yeah that part right so we don't we don't give ourselves enough credit for the things we've done our accomplishments um, who we are, uh, how brilliant we are. We don't. We spend a lot of time cheering on those uh, around us and not cherishing the relationship we should really have with ourselves. So so let's talk about a couple secrets or recipes that people can utilize to live boldly today. Because we're not talking about something that they have to wait 15, 20 years to do, right? Exactly. They can do it today. So let's talk about those, uh, some of those secrets or recipes that you have for people to live boldly and beyond limits today. What's Uh, number one? Number one is get out of your head. Quit talking talking yourself out of stuff. Say yes when you want to say no. Ah. Is that equivalent to going with your first thought? Because oftentimes I think I'm learning this myself right now. Uh, It's not something that I wasn't you know, you have this feeling about something and you be like, eh. but then you try to convince yourself it's something else outside of what it actually really is. And the first thought you had is the one that it is. And that's the one you should go with, because every other thought now becomes 
residue that clouds your judgment, clouds your vision, and it clouds your thoughts. Now you're like unsure. So then you make a decision based upon how you feel in the moment. And then when that feeling has fleeted and it's gone, you're stuck with the decision, but you could have made a different decision had you went with your first gut. You don't need me on the show. You can do this yourself. I'll talk to you later. You, you just gonna you just gonna take care of yourself off and, and get on about your business. <laughs> This, you got this. Yes, actually, exactly. Get out of your head. Go with your first mind. Yeah, that's the old school way of saying it. Yeah. But yes, say yes when you are trying to talk yourself out of saying yes and just do it. Stop vacillating between should I, should I, I don't know. Mm. If you're doing that, it's a sign that you just really should stretch yourself and say yes. Vacillating. That's the college word, right? Yeah, yep. it is. Sounded like it. Sounded like it. Hey, it hey. And I'm old school because I'm old school. And you are. <laughs> I'm in my 40s. I mean, so hey, am you, can't, I. you can't get any more old school than that. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can. All right. What's number two? Um, the first one was get out of your head. The second one is, um, uh, the, it just escaped me. Uh, the first one was get out of your head. The second one is. It's in the head. It's in your head right now. It is in my head. And it was in my head right before you asked. About the college word. See, about I did the ca- you did. I did that to you. Got me off my game. The first is get out of your head. Um, the second is do it afraid. Ah, elaborate. So you don't have to be one hundred percent comfortable in order to do something that's going to stretch you. Some of us yeah. wait for the perfect moment. Well, when I when this. Well, no, I can't because I don't have my speakers kit. Well, no, I can't. I have to wait until no. Just just do it, and mm-hmm. and the more you do it, afraid, the more you continue to show up, then the fear is going to go. Do okay. it afraid. Yeah, shaking in your boots, nervous. Push yourself. That sounds so simple, Tina, but it's so impactful. Do it afraid. Yes. Remember when we first started talking, I said we try to protect ourselves and we try to keep ourselves safe. But if you just betray yourself and say, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not keeping you safe. I'm throwing you out there and I'm going to do it on a regular basis. So you may as well. This is how I live my life. Okay. I'm going to betray you. You can't trust me. I'm not to be trusted. I'm throwing <laughs> you can't you trust to the yourself. Wolves. No, I'm throwing you to the wolves every chance I get. Believe me, I know what's best for you. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, that's brilliant. So you do a lot of bus throwing to yourself. Yes. Wow. You wow. Must. You must. Because you're not always going to have a coach around you. You're not always going to have somebody. To, to push you. So you have to learn to push yourself. So get out of your head. Do it afraid. What's the next one? Uh, push yourself. Like like off the cliff, push yourself? or Yes, off the cliff. Push yourself. When you think you can't go anymore, go a little further. Okay. okay. When you so think I, you can't I, grow anymore, stretch yourself and continue to grow. What do you tell people when they feel mentally exhausted and they saying, well, I can't, Tina, I can't go anymore. I hate the word. I can't, by the way. What do you tell them, though? OK, so remember, I told you I used to have a fitness company. Right. And of course, I was a certified fitness instructor. So stretching is a very vital part of working out. Right. Stretching is imperative. You have to do it before your workout and you have to do it at the end of your workout. At the beginning of your workout, you're tight. If you've worked out efficiently enough at the end of your workout, stretching is easier. But the thing about when people first come to class and they haven't worked out since 1972, right? And they show up and and they're in the class. Stretching is hard. Mm. I can't go any further than this. I bet you can. You take a deep breath. You inhale and you stretch as you exhale. Guess what you do? You move. You go an inch further than you could before. And you continue to do it. And you're like, I I didn't think I could go any further than that. Mm. Life is like that. You think you can't go further? You can. It's your mind Mm. trying to keep you out of danger from getting hurt, from getting outside of this bubble that we built for ourselves. Cut it out. Take a deep breath and go into the stretch. And you're, you're further than you were before. 
you don't need me on this show. <laughs> Somebody got to ask the question. <laughs> Man, you are different. Let me tell you that you are different. Uh, but I like the way your mind works. And, you know, you meet a lot of people in today's society. They are cookie cutters. They are they are systematic machinery almost because they just kind of go with what everybody else does or says. And they don't develop their own individual thoughts. And oftentimes, especially in the clubhouse. <laughs> I was like the clubhouse oh, yeah. is becoming so ridiculous these Let days. Let me piggyback off what you said. Is there any room on this pig's back? No. <laughs> You're right though. You're right. So so it, it's it's one of those things where as a confidence coach, you give confidence to a host of people. Like I stop by some of your rooms sometimes just to see what you're talking about, stalking you somewhat, but not really stalking, but just stopping by to say, hey, OK, Tina, I see you. I, I, hey, I see you. Sometimes I see you and I just don't go in. I just be like, nope, not going in, <laughs> not going in today. Uh, but I know as I often said this to a host of people who are in that space uh, as motivators and empowers and coaches who empowers you. Who motivates you is what I want to know. Oh, wow. There are people who motivate me who have no idea. They motivate they motivate me because they don't know me. Mm. There are people that I watch that I am in awe of. Um, there are people who know me that don't know that I'm watching them. Right. Mm. Um, and I'm just inspired by their tenacity to keep going to keep pushing and most of them push themselves. Um, so yeah, I'm inspired by, I'm motivated by my mom. She's a, she's an amazing chick. She has a third grade education. She had seven kids. Mm. Um, she is 88 years old um, and she's in really good health. She's a musician. She's been playing for over 60 years, um, but just, her tenacity, her her ability to keep going through life and keep showing up and keep pushing forward no matter what, she motivates me. Yeah. Mm. All right, Tina. <sighs> what a great conversation with you, man. This was cool. Yeah, it's kind of cool to hang out, right? Yeah. So if, if people want to connect with you, how can they do so? They can connect with me by going to my website, which is milliondollarconfidence.co. Um, on Clubhouse, you can follow me at Tina Moore. And everywhere else, I believe I'm Tina Moore Global. Uh, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I was in Clubhouse early enough to just get my name. That's never happened. Oh. Uh, yeah. I felt good about, I felt good about that. <laughs> I was like, this, is, this has never happened. <laughs> the imaginary hair. I see it. I see it. <laughs> I felt amazing. Yeah. But yeah, that's how I can get in contact with me. I love the fact that you added global. Yes. You weren't going to be local. You're going to be global. <laughs> We've been local long enough. Okay? Long enough. Yeah. Okay. I hear that. Well, I appreciate you hanging out with me. We got to do it again real soon. So thank Let's... you so much, Tina Moore. Thank Tina Moore, you. ladies and gentlemen. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just like now. I have the radio on the telly.